Greetings, Levi Jonathan here with the SPLC quarterly report. This uh, article is called The Last Word. It's uh, entitled uh, Nostrabamus. Nostrabamus. It's supposed to be humorous, um, but it's highly inaccurate. You know, first of all, I'll say, you know, this guy's going to tell us about how the the economy's, the economy's good and, and all these things. I'm not going to mention the president because I understand it's, it's a real turnoff, and I think it's designed like that. When somebody speaks about uh, particularly the president, um, honestly, I think we should spend more time critiquing Joe Biden and possibly some more of the presidential advisors. Um, obviously, the president's just a puppet. Um, he's a spokesperson, just like a company. If you have... Apple or um, many other companies, the CEO is knowledgeable, but they don't really get into the nuts and bolts of the operations. They're more about public relations. Anyway, this guy right here, this is what he says, and I have to come on here and contradict. It's probably going to be another video I'm going to race in the future, but this is just what it is, you know. Um, you're speaking about the economy. I got an MBA. Um, I, we did a strategic report, strategic analysis, um, the last uh, course of the program at USF. And, um, you know, I, I covered the economic environment, macro and micro. And everything I said came to light. Um, I since throw that report away because I really don't care about that stuff. Um, it, it was a big waste of time, but I mean, I'm sure I could get with some of my class members and uh, redig that to the surface. But it was like when, you know, when you're in the program, everybody's, you know, all optimistic. I'm sure they are today. Um, it wasn't just the time of season. It's like a perpetual thing, you know, where they, it's just like you got cheerleaders during a, a football game or something, you know, it's like they make you believe that you're the star. When in all actuality, you're gonna go work for a factory somewhere making chump change and hoping that someday, you know, you go back to those good old days again. So, anyway, I have to speak on this. I have to speak on this because it's like a lot of times people look at someone like myself, and I, that's why I say someone like myself because this isn't about me. I'm not trying to draw attention like other people might think. It's not really like that. It's, it's the fact of the matter is you're tired of seeing the same old stuff, the same old people mismanaging the world. Uh, you know, that, the, believe me, the world is of the Prince of Darkness. We're not going to get that mixed up. But at the same time, when they continue to accuse you time after time of being that person that's in the wrong, when they clearly are in the wrong, eventually you get tired, man. You get fed up. And when you can see into the horizon, you see a storm coming. There's a storm coming. Nobody want to bring out their umbrellas. The storm hits them. Hey. You know, it's like Jeremiah. The economy's purring like a kitten after years of growling like a sour tummy. Purring like a kitten after years of growling. Well, what has really changed about the economy? Has the housing market gone up? You know, uh, it says in here, stock market's way, way up. Well, that's after people already took the losses. You know, the thing is, is that if you have a dollar and you lose 50%, you only have 50%. If you lose 50% overnight, it, you're not going to gain back that 50% overnight because you have to make hundreds, if not thousands of, of percent, at least, over, if you're talking about overnight. So, you know, when the economy fell off, people basically lost 40% overnight. It was basically overnight. They can't recover that. I don't care how much the stock market goes up. It doesn't matter. They'll never recover that. Um, jobs are coming back. What kind of jobs? Um, you got these people fighting for 15 because they want to sit in that little grease pit. I mean, you know, we're, we're feeding people poison, GMOs, and yet they want to make 15, 15. They have no idea how the economy works. You know, my blessings go out to them. But they just don't understand. You can't increase, you can't double minimum wage overnight. It's going to throw a lot of other things off. 
It's just not reasonable. You have to make incremental changes. You could probably bump it up two or three dollars, and you could probably bump it up two or three dollars in two or three years. But you've got to make some kind of a step, um, which I, hey, I guarantee it's not going to affect my business one bit. If you bump it up to 15, I think it will give me more business for sure. Um, some of those people will start to rent, they'll get out of their mom's house. Um, you know, they'll definitely come and get more appliances, but I think that there's a trick to it, and I think it's going to hurt some other small businesses. Um, and will McDonald's fire people? <sighs> yes and no. I mean, short term, maybe not, but long term, absolutely. They're going to be looking for more and more ways to get automation, and so, you know, you can just, that stuff's not going to go anywhere. You get the robots, and they're here to stay. And it's only because, um, you know, we, we need a strike. We need a permanent strike. And we need a way for to survive while we're striking. You know, we can't just go into the strike. Just cold, just let's just do it head first. You know, we have to prepare. We actually need to bunker oh, some food away and, uh, and figure out, you know, modes of transportation, communication. All these things are important. We need radios. We need all sorts of things. Anyway, let me continue. The war in Afghanistan is finally over. Period. Finally. Period. <clears throat> who says who? You know? <laughs> Look, they got $3 trillion of rare earth minerals in that country. They're not going to let those, those minerals just go, you know, just turn to dust, and they're not going to let the Russians have them either, so, uh, the, the, uh, the big banks, the big banksters that control the money supply, uh, um, depend on those minerals, they depend on fossil fuels, which now fossil fuels are getting very unpopular, so, they're dependent on those minerals more than ever, the minerals are going to make the smart, uh, components in the smartphone, um, components for computers, etc., and TVs, so they're highly valued and they're not going to give them up. The war in Afghanistan is in transition period. They're finding out how to transition from, you know, the military to these private contractors. And eventually they want to bring in those manimals, those, those drone beasts. More than 10 million previously uninsured Americans now have health insurance. Well, at least they put health insurance. They didn't put health care. So I might give that, give that one to him. And the last thing, did I mention the price of gas? Did I mention the price of gas? And they say, I could go on, but I won't because this isn't about, you know, extolling the uh, commander in chief, extolling the policies and virtues of the commander in chief. Mm, well, gas price down is only more pollution for the environment. I say this person's a lie. They're they're trying to to puff up the the uh, the, the commander in chief, and uh, I mean you know I, look I got nothing against the guy personally, but here's how it works you know. <clears throat> Satan is a master of deception, and when he brings you into his house, he deceives you, and you think that you're doing the right thing, but in all actuality you aren't.